State of West Virginia, J.B. McCuskey, who recently made a switch in his decision uh, in terms of running for office for next year. J.B. is on a bit of a time squeeze this morning, so we need to get him out in about 10 minutes. We'll get right to it. J.B., good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning, gentlemen. How is everybody today? We are well. Thank Great. you kindly. And we'll, we'll do a longer form segment with J.B. next week. By the way, I'm scheduling that with uh, his guy, uh, even as we speak. Uh, J.B., your decision to give up the dream of being governor of the state of West Virginia for now and now pursuing the office of attorney general. Yeah. So, you know, politics is the combination of timing and service. And, you know, you guys and I have talked about this a lot. Public service means a lot to me, and I've committed myself uh, to the service of the people of West Virginia for the foreseeable part of my life. And, um, you know, as I as I looked at the governor's race, um, I found myself, um, you know, surrounded by some some folks who were who were, well, you know, one of them is the 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 popular delegate and the son of a of one of West Virginia's sort of more formidable families. The other one is a, a very uh, successful businessman who also comes from the same kind of family. We, we got Mac Warner, who was, um, you know, a a a decorated military family and, and one of our, our most uh, famous military families in the state. And, and then also Patrick Morrissey, who, as we know, is been a wildly successful attorney general and is a fundraising sort of juggernaut. And when you look at the idea of service, you have to sort of match your skills with your timing. And, you know, I feel that that the accomplishments that I've made in the auditor's office and the experience that I've gotten in the auditor's office and the ability that I have to transform government and to to make West Virginians lives better um, really matches up well with the attorney general's office. And so when you match timing um, with service, that that is the decision that we came to. And, and we're very happy about it. JB, it's one thing to withdraw from a race. It's quite unusual to withdraw from one race and enter into another race. Your decision to weigh the pros and cons of doing that and ultimately coming to this decision. Yeah, I, I mean, I think we sort of just went through that. I mean, that that is that is what that is that was the decision that we made. Right, but are you concerned about the perception some might have of this decision? Your your opponents um, in the AG race have already been very critical of you in their press releases about this decision. Yeah, I, I am. I am focused on on myself, uh, and I'm focused on on our campaign and our ability to serve and and the the great many supporters that I have that are very excited. Bill? Yeah. Uh, good morning, J.B. Uh, in the occasions we've t- discussed while you're still in the governor's race, you were one of the candidates that chose to walk down substantive issues as opposed to cultural issues. Will you pursue the same approach as you run for attorney general? I think that the attorney general's office in West Virginia is, is a really, really unique place for a myriad of reasons. And I think one of the things that this attorney general um, – is going to get to do is to work with uh, this new foundation to to use uh, this opioid settlement money in a way that transforms people's lives proactively. Um, I think one of the other things that this attorney general's office is going to get to do is to ensure that we are working um, with criminal justice reform and working with our, our public defenders and doing all of the things that we need to do to make sure that we don't have a two-tiered system of justice, that we're treating people instead of punishing people, and we're punishing people that need to be punished. And um, I think, you know, the, the, the idea behind the, – the idea that we have a lot of issues that need fixed in West Virginia main, is maintained. And I think the attorney general's office, uh, under the leadership of somebody who is a, a proven and experienced um, leader in state government is going to be able to, to aid in that goal. And, of course, like we've already talked about, Bill, the ultimate goal here is to make sure that every single kid gets a great education, right, that every single citizen has world-class infrastructure, and that every single person in West Virginia that's yearning to, to, to have a better life uh, is given the opportunities to do that. And, and that is the, the mission of every one of the public servants in West Virginia, and, and that's what I'm looking forward to doing. JB, you've highlighted one of the major issues that is going to have to be tackled by the next attorney general, which is the administration of those uh, uh, opioid funds, which I believe the, the fund is over a billion dollars that's going to have to be distributed to, to uh, communities in West Virginia. What's the role of the AG going to be? Because I, I would imagine all these communities are going to come forward and say, hey, we need the money. We've had this problem. This is the impact we've had with opioids. It's pretty much uh, a problem statewide, of course. So what criteria is the attorney general going to be utilizing to dis- to distribute these funds equitably? 
Sure. So I think one of the things that, interestingly enough, um, I've done in the auditor's office that makes this such a unique fit is that, you know, we were sort of the tip of the spear as it related to the uh, the COVID money that went out to our local governments. And so we were able to, to build really incredible relationships with our mayors and with our county commissioners so that we could be the place where they went for information on how they could spend the money. How do we leverage this money? How do we use it to get more federal money? Um, how do we account for this money? How do we show the government how we spent this money? Uh, and, and for all of those reasons, you know, we are going to be in a very unique position to make the spending of this money transparent and accountable. And we're going to be in a very unique position to make the spending of this money effective. Uh, because the, the the thing that must happen is that the portion of this money that goes to the foundation, which I believe is 74 percent, and the portion of this that goes out to the, to the local governments, which I believe is about 24 percent, both of those things need to work in conjunction with each other because the singular goal is to make sure that this plague stops here and that this generation of children in West Virginia grow up with a, with a different focus uh, and, a, and and significantly and and hopefully way less addiction. And so... As long as we have a singular focus and a singular mission, I think our experience in in managing large funds, uh, especially as they relate to local governments, is going to be key. Well, and what oversight will there be? Uh, You're talking about managing these funds once they're sent out to the communities. Will there continue to be oversight at the state level in terms of how these funds are going to be expended? Yeah. I mean, I I think the answer to that question is absolutely yes. And, And the trick to oversight is to making sure that everyone knows what they're allowed to do first. Uh, and then giving them great access to information and to people who can answer questions in real time. And we have something called uh, the Local Government Services Division in my office, and, um, you know, that is what we do. That is one of the the main functions of my office is to make sure that we are providing that level of information. So I have great experience and great ability to continue to do that with a different kind of fund. Your two opponents are split on the possibilities of expanding criminal jurisdiction for the attorney general's office in the state. J.B., where are you on that arrangement? Yeah, it, Senator Weld is correct on this one. Um, the, the the attorney general's office has sufficient power as it stands now. Uh, our 55 county prosecutors, who I work with a lot through my public integrity and fraud unit, um, are great. And, and the system that we have now works, I think, perfectly well. It's not easy to change anyway, as it's in the Constitution, but uh, would you favor even slight expansion, if a possibility? The the Attorney General's office in West Virginia has, I I believe, sufficient authority to do all of the things that it needs to do well. Um, And I I do not see uh, any need to expand that role, particularly constitutionally. Final question for JB. Yeah, JB, going back to your the campaign, Rob mentioned a second ago that your opponent's going to say you, you you shifted from one race to another race. Another thing your opponents are going to say you have not practiced for the last several years. How will you counter that argument? Sure. So, you know, in the auditor's office, uh, I manage a bunch of lawyers, and I'm the securities commissioner and the land commissioner. Uh, we also have a public integrity and fraud unit. So. I spent a lot of time every single day uh, working both with my lawyers on lawsuits that have been brought against us. If you guys remember the um, the, the lawsuit uh, about how the, the timekeeping was being made with West Virginia, we had a lot of long conversation about that on this show. Um, but I spend a very large portion of my day every day uh, working with the lawyers in my office, defending cases against us, finding ways to bring new cases. Uh, we currently have a case that we are, are working on against the SEC. Um, And so, you know, at the end of the day, uh, I I have I'm a lawyer and I spend a lot of my time working both with the prosecutorial side of my office, also with the uh, the 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 litigation side of my office uh, and just generally so many things that we do in in my office involve uh, the reading and analysis of statutes uh, and creating opinions about what they mean and how they're going to affect uh, the government and local governments. And so. Uh, I, I practice law pretty much every day. JB, thanks so much for squeezing us in this morning. We appreciate it. We'll talk to you in a longer form interview next week at 835 uh, next Wednesday.